Well, what do you think? I have to get this one on camera. I just, 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 just do. It's damn a steel. Damn that steel. And yes, it's not $500. Uh, I hate to name names, but a certain knife company that also owns this brand would make, you know, a regular, really cool knife like the 604 or whatever, and then put a special edition out with damage steel and it'd be like double the price. Now it'd be like said 250 or 275, it'd be like 475. And I just don't want to pay an extra $200 for damage steel. So what's the situation? Well, this one was nice because this whole knife is under $300 with the damage steel. And it's made by Reich and it's the 1902. And there's the backside of it. And it's going to be uh, fading here now because it'll get my oils on it. But um, blue pocket clip, blue backspacer, blue surround on the pivots, nice bronze, uh, titanium hardware. We will disassemble this one. Ceramic bearings. Reich knows how to make a knife just right. Um, and this is that red carbon fiber shred isn't that cool yeah I, I think it's just a handsome knife got a little cutaway in here you can kick the blade open with your middle finger nice front choil and guess what it'll still even work as a knife it's still a knife not just a thing of beauty to hide in your man safe no this is something you can carry and use. It's centered. Is there any blade player lock rock? Hell no. That baby's tight. It's tight. And it's all right. There's your lanyard hole right there. It's integrated right into that backspacer. Look at that backspacer. That's a long road to all kinds of good looking, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Wow, almost full length. Really nicely done. Now, uh, I was talking to a buddy the other day and I go, you know, I'm not Mr. Half and Half. I don't like putting inlays on one side and not on the other. I'll tell you what, this, this calls for somebody that does uh, pimping on knives uh, and modifications to get some of this material, right? And they just plug it in. Boom, 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 boom. I don't know why they didn't. That would have just, that would have been it. That would have been it. It would have been lust, uh, the bee's knees, all in. Because this knife is a big freaking hoss. And I like big knives. And this baby satisfies that hunger, that's for sure. Look at that. Is that four inches? That's four inches at the shortest point. Okay? And cutting edge three and a half all day long with, you know, that's going to be over a hundred millimeter blade. Nine inches right on the mark, 23 centimeters. Once you hit 22, you got you a big old knife. 23, even bigger, even bigger. So like that, check this out. But not fat. 0.49, 12.6 millimeters blade stock mm, let's make sure we get the fattest part we can yeah only 3.3 not much 0.13 okay so it's not four millimeter any of that kind of stuff Whew, really slicey really sharp damascus steel you know and i am not a big damascus fan okay i am not uh, guilty as charged. You know what? It was just, I got wounded so bad back in the day uh, buying some cheap Pakistani knives and they all do Damascus. I don't know why, but they just think all us Westerners just love the hell out of Damascus. Now, Middle Eastern was where a lot of the, you know, in ancient days, Damascus blades were made. The problem is I don't want leaf springs off of a 56 Buick, you know, forged into my blade. 
might be cool for you know conversation but this my friends is not a disappointment because this is damasteel so this is made in sweden and this is a stainless damascus okay so this is really well done made into an ingot and then rolled and rolled and different patterns can be brought out oh that's just lovely stuff that's lovely stuff so yes i do 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 like it so much mm. now is it worth uh you know paying 200 dollars extra no it's not so this knife is around uh, i think now, I think it's a little over, right at, maybe a little over $200 with the regular blade on it. And I forget what the regular blade was. It was an M390. I'll put it down here. Uh, but, so they kicked it up to, to this. And I, now this, I may be a little bit, a bit off on this, but I keep thinking this is around 278 somewhere in there. So... 280 so that is an extra bit of money okay but it's not 200 dollars okay so i'm just saying okay i'll pay a little bit of a premium and this is worth having as a damas steel a, a damascus looking blade because first of all it's very usable steel it's very clean steel it's well done and it's stainless the carbon steels that are the mystery damascus high carbon corrosive stuff don't thrill me but this really does i like this so and it's handsome and it it it's a good situation here because this is an elegant looking knife and reich is known for making elegant looking knives now let's throw this on the scale while we're just chattering away but don't you think i mean i do like the integrals they've done the alien or the alien knife um was it alien six alien whatever and so then the uh thor five and the thor six and all that kind of stuff you know they they had you know, integrals from one through six actually uh, there you go, 116 grams, and let's roll back around to ounces. So, four ounces. I mean, four ounces, nine-inch knife. That's not too shabby. Uh, the detent on this, actually, is pretty damn strong, and I'm going to try and keep my finger off of there. Uh, it is pretty strong. I'd give it a solid 5.2, 5.3, somewhere in there. And I'm trying to fail this, by the way. Ah, you know, actually, they may have gone a bit, just a tad too far because mm, they're close. They're close. Okay, they're close. Uh, because if you're going to thumb or finger flick a knife then you don't want a real stiff detent. And yeah, I'm, you know, I don't find a comfortable way to, to thumb flick this without having my damn grubby paws all over the lock bar. But middle finger, see, I'm off of that lock bar. Kick it, no problem. So, ooh, yeah, I mean, okay. I, I may should withdraw my criticism of the detent being a little too strong I, it, it's it just depends on who you are and how you like it this is not shabby at all it's not bad it's not bad uh flipper tabs not too not too out there it's kind of strange how they jimped just the nub right here see back front but just right up here now for all practical purposes, that's all you're coming in contact with. So, that makes sense. They didn't overdo the jimping. Blade shape is nice. Piercing, slicing, and just damn good looking. Just damn good looking. Now, this is supposed to be bronze, by the way. They call this bronze. So, it's just lightly, if you can look in the right... You know, they didn't overdo it. This is not a heavy bronze look. It's just a, just a touch, a glint of bronze. Whew. 
And oh, by the way, this is the third one I've had. The first one I got for one of the viewers and it came in and you know what? I didn't even open the box. I asked him, you want me to open the box, check it out? Well, if you, you know, you just don't, you know. And I'm going, okay, never mind. I shipped it on to him. And then the second guy was like, if you're going to get one to review. But then um, he sent me money for that and another knife so quick. And I couldn't get into the studio. So I just said, hell with it. I sent it on to him. This is the third one. Finally get some camera time. Finally. So, uh, wow. So, not just me that finds this knife to be extremely attractive, and I think the other two guys, all kidding aside, really said this is just a great price point for this kind of quality. The Damas Steel and the Titanium. And, you know, Reich, they're proud of their stuff. Damn it. You get those Thor 5, and Thor 6, and Alien Knife. I mean, we're talking five, $600, okay? Uh, so when you get something under 300 like this, you kind of wonder, like, did they miss uh, price this or something? Because this is, this is definitely worth all the money at 275 I've seen a whole lot less. So there you go. They won't last long, though. That's the thing about Reich. They put stuff out there, and some of their models just hang out there for a couple of months. They're gone, and they're gone forever. So this is one of those opportunities. This might be a good one to keep and have somebody just plug a few uh, patches in there from this kind of material if I could find it. And, wow, this thing would be all in for me. Look at the pocket clip. No screw there, right? Coming in from the other side. Clean look. And the body screws here are kind of part of the style points. Ergos on this knife are good. They're fine. Here, that's perfect for me. Everything else lays down beyond there. Nice. Of course, you can work your way right up here. And then it's even better because this finger's fatter. And so right there, oh yeah, right up like this. This is real natural feeling. This is not quite as good, but it works. It works. I am on the, the leeward side here of that hump. So for me, it does. Different size hands may have different comfort levels because of that. Reverse grips, good, good. Plenty of handle length, plenty of handle length. Fit and finish is good. First rate, first rate. You got a lot of traction up and down here. Um, these cutouts and stuff provide some, but there's not much going on here for traction. Then again, I don't see this as a real hard use knife, but I'll tell you what, she's a dog. She's a big dog. She's a big dog, and you got some jimping up here you can feel, so you can get down on this, and that that's some quality materials there. Blade handle length. Ah, we got all we can. In fact, my friends, ooh, I can almost, but not quite, because of the flow of this design, can't really run interference on that blade. If I pushed hard enough, I could, but that's, that's it. Now, the design flow, oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely nice. Really nice. Balance, right there. Right there. Cha-ching, time to pull this baby apart. And guess what? We're not going to do it from the front, are we? So let's see how this thing is put together. This ought to be interesting. And then I'm trying to figure out how does that, how do we work that here on the end? I'm going to have to take this screw out back here, though, aren't I? Because this is not accessible from here. Okay. Ooh, that's easy. Okay, so we're good there. Um, is that a number eight? Yes, of course, because it's a quality knife. No sissy ass number six is in here. Not least on the body screws. Okay, we're going to come back side here. I think this is the way we're going to have to do it. And let's see how that knocks out. Uh, it looks like the same size screw, basically, so... I'm going to go ahead and 
pull this one too. And I think that's all she wrote on that one too. Okay, that's the same size. Okay, lay those down. And they look all the same. Yeah, bup, 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 bup. we're done. We're done, son. Okay. So, yes, we've got ceramic bearings. Just like that. Looks pretty clean inside. Looks like some heavier type lube was in there of some sort. And, of course, steel washer, hardened steel insert, ceramic, uh, detent, over travel stop, etc. Backspacer right here, which is still held in place in some way, shape, or form. Let me see how this works. Wow, that's interesting. You can see that this backspacer is threaded. And here's the, uh, the other screw for the pocket clip. This also is involved, but you just unscrew it, the backspacer. Uh, Amen. Really odd. Okay. There's the front uh, pivot situation, but it's not uh, D-shaped or anything, so odd guess you're gonna have to position that when you reassemble and here's your pivot surround which i did not remove but i want to put this i'm going to put this center it right up put bearings and a little bit of oil This um, there you go. This should come back together here now. There's your blade stop, goes right in there. Move it screw. Okay. And we need to uh, put a hardware back in. That's easy. Good. And last but not least. And yes, that's tight. Okay. Looks like we're good to go. All back together. With that, I'll tell you what, the D10, if you like an, a really nice, stiff, you know, D10 that you can really sink your teeth into, this has got it. This is, this is no layback here. 
but it's still pliable enough to finger flick. So that was a balancing act that they achieved on this one. The 1902, I, I like it. I really do. Damasteel steel blade, bronze body, supposedly very light bronze, but just a handsome knife overall. And we do. We love them knives right there. And if you love them knives, you might want to get you a hat. A love them knives hat, 18 bucks. I pay the shipping. And it says stay sharp on the back. It's stonewashed. It's gray on the back. It's green on the front. It's high quality. We already dragged her down the road to give you that pre-worn look. And made, proudly made in Bangladesh, but stitched in the U.S. of A. in Arkansas. And... For that 18 bucks gets you a free koozie as well. So what the heck? Go all the way. Less than 40 of them left was just going to be a limited run regardless. But really nice Velcro stripe here fitment. So it's not some cheap hat with uh, plastic on it. You know. And these are $18 a piece. But plastic snaps, mesh. 18 bucks or 18 bucks of good luck and wonderfulness. And this is the one I've been wearing for days now. So love them knives at gmail.com. If you want a hat, you get a koozie with it. And you know what we do? Well, we tell you to stay sharp.